So we've learned how herpes causes mucocutaneous lesions, but now let's talk about the clinical side of this whole story. So first of all, we said HSV1 and 2 first infect you through the skin or the mucous membranes. But how exactly do they get there? Well, it turns out the transmission is almost always directly from person to person and not from fomites. So that means it can be transmitted from skin to skin, genital to genital, oral to genital, oral to oral. You get the idea. Basically, direct contact. And now, when we said HSV causes mucocutaneous lesions, what exactly does that mean? What are those lesions? Let's get a little more specific. So remember that herpes tends to affect the oral cavity and the genital area, and that in either place it can be either primary or recurrent. Now the first thing to know is that in all of these cases, the lesions, the herpetic lesions, are usually vesicular. And vesicles are small raised lesions that are filled with clear fluid. And they can unroof or rupture, in which case they ulcerate. So as you can imagine, that can be quite painful. Now getting a little more specific, let's talk about each of the four scenarios. So let's start with oral recurrent infection because that's what most people are familiar with. So this is often called herpes labialis and it usually consists of a few vesicles on the lips that ulcerate like we talked about and they're commonly called cold sores. And they often occur at the corners of the mouth and can be quite painful. So then what about primary oral infection? Here's something that's confusing. Usually it's asymptomatic but when it isn't, it's actually more severe than the recurrence. So either you get nothing or everything. And in kids, if it's symptomatic, it presents as gingivostomatitis. In other words, lesions on the mouth and gums. Whereas in adults, it presents as pharyngitis. So the lesions are usually further back in the pharynx. In both kids and adults, it's usually associated with systemic symptoms like fever, malaise, headache. Now most of the time, oral herpes is acquired early in life whereas genital herpes is acquired later in life. And primary and recurrent genital herpes follow the same pattern as the oral infections, meaning that the primary infection can be asymptomatic or severe with systemic symptoms, while the recurrences are less severe. Now, we're not going to give special names like herpes labialis or gingivostomatitis, but one thing you should know is genital herpes tends to reactivate very frequently following primary infection, whereas Reactivation is less common after primary oral herpes, like gingivostomatitis. Now with oral herpes and genital herpes, once you're infected, you're always infected. But the good news is, usually over time, there will be fewer and fewer recurrences. The bad news is, although transmission is most likely to occur when someone has an active lesion that you can see, you can actually have reactivation without lesions, in which case you can get asymptomatic shedding of the virus. So that means you don't have to have an apparent active lesion to be infectious.